Composition stoichiometry is our first step to understanding chemistry because it unites the terms atom, mole, molecule, and mass and allows us to convert between them. Now, our objective in this video is gonna to be to answer these three questions, but before we get there, I wanna highlight a few terms that will help us not only understand the math involved in these questions, but also understand the underlying principles. And we're gonna start with that word mole. So I'm gonna write up here that a mole is a packet of atoms or molecules. And that's my working definition. That's actually the definition that's got me through years and years of chemistry. But I'm gonna change this a little bit to be a little bit more technical. And so when I say a packet, what I'm talking about is actually 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's a whole lot. That's a pretty big packet. And when I'm talking about atoms and molecules, you don't have to necessarily restrict it to atoms and molecules. So I'm gonna use a more general term and I'm gonna say elementary entities. Now it just so happens that in chemistry, when we're talking about elementary entities, we are talking about the atom or a molecule or even a compound, which could be ionic, which is what we're gonna be doing in this particular set of questions. Now typically these are our most fundamental smallest particles that we're dealing with when we're running chemical reactions or observing uh, any sort of chemical species or sample. And so we would call these as chemists the most common elementary entities. And that's a pretty uncommon phrase that we use here. So don't worry about it too much. But understand that when we scale it up, what we're talking about, if we're talking about a single mole, is actually 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of these atoms or some sort of molecule. And that's a lot, and it's a pretty odd number. So let me talk about exactly where we get that number before we move on. So if we go down here, this is carbon, as you would see it on the periodic table. And what you see is a six, a C, and a 12.01. And what I wanna focus on in this particular lesson is this 12.01 right here. So if we have 12.01, the technical way of reading that is that it's 12.01 atomic mass units or AMU. And what that represents along with this six that you see right here is that that is six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus of this atom. And furthermore, what that means is one proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit and one neutron has a mass of one atomic mass unit. But if you really wanna think about lab-based chemistry, there's never ever gonna be a time in your undergraduate career where you are dealing with individual atoms and you are measuring them one by one. It just doesn't make sense. It's way, way too small. So the other thing you can do when reading the periodic table is say this 12.01 represents 12.01 grams per mole. And in order to get between the units of the atomic mass unit and the gram unit, you're actually using Avogadro's number, which is this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So I'm gonna write that's Avogadro's number, which we call Na. And the conversions I'm talking about here are really two things uh, that you can think of. Number one, we can say that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules, which is sort of our definition that we talked about in the very beginning. But how does this actually make sense? What is the conversion that's allowing this to be true? Well, the conversion itself is actually that one gram is equal 
to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atomic mass units. And so when you combine these two ideas together, you're actually unifying the world of the atoms and molecules, that microscopic world, with the world that we know, which is measuring things in grams and looking at moles and looking at reasonable quantities of our chemical. So let's transition over to these questions and sort of make sense of all of this mathematically. And so the first question we're going to start with is how many moles are in 63.88 grams of iron 3 oxide or Fe2O3? And what I want you to think about as we work through this is if we were to actually measure this in atomic mass units, it would be an enormous number. And it would kind of be unreasonable to do that. Because if you think about 63, about 64 grams of iron three oxide, that's something that could probably fit in the palm of your hand. It's something that you could look at and it would look like rust because that's what this is. And it makes a lot of sense to measure it in grams. It wouldn't make any sense in the world to measure it in atomic mass units. And so we need a fundamental unit that we measure that in that is not atoms or molecules, which are these tiny little things. Instead, we have the mole. And so the concept of the mole through these three questions should begin to make sense why we actually use it. But now let's talk about the math. So the math involved here is a conversion between grams and number of moles. And I want you to think about this conceptually, but I also want you to think of it mathematically um, where the units actually cancel out and give you the desired final unit. And so we do need the molar mass of this in order to do the math here. So I need to look at the periodic table and say that I have two iron and iron is going to have a molar mass of about 55.85 grams per mole. And then I have three oxygen and oxygen has a molar mass of about 16.00 grams per mole. And so when I add all that together, I'm going to get 159.7 grams per mole, which is what I'm going to use here. So mathematically, I'm going from grams to mole. And so the first way I'm going to solve this is to simply say that I have 63.88 grams. And I'm trying to get to number of moles. So all I really need to do here is cancel out that gram unit and give me the mole unit. And so without really thinking about what I'm doing, I'm going to put grams down here and moles up here. And that is just dimensional analysis. But what I solved for over here is that I have 159.7 grams per mole. And so here my units cancel out perfectly and get me the desired unit of just number of moles. And this would mathematically give me an answer of 0 0.40 moles. But let's take a step back and look at what we actually did. The actual calculation that we did here, if you want to think of it in a different way, is we took the mass and we divided it by the molar mass. And that's equal to the number of moles. And so similarly, if we go to question two, what is the mass of 2.30 moles of iron three oxide? We're doing the exact opposite. So we're going to start with 2.30 moles. And what we're looking to get to is grams. So I'm going to cancel out that mole term and give me grams and that is the molar mass so that's going to be 159.7 grams i'm going to cancel out moles and i'm going to end up with an answer and it's equal to about 367 grams now again if you don't like the mathematical canceling unit approach realize that all we're doing here is we're taking the number of moles 
and we're multiplying it by the molar mass, which I'm now going to abbreviate as two capital M's, so molar mass, and that's going to be equal to just the regular old mass. All right. Now let's take these skills now and apply it to this third question, which is definitely something I would consider a challenge question. So number three is how many oxygen atoms are in 12.6 grams of this iron three oxide? And before I get into the math here, I just want to draw out a general approach here, which can be a very helpful exercise when dealing with a challenge multi-step problem like this. So we have a mass. And we're looking to get to oxygen atoms, but there are a few things we have to do along the way. So with that mass, we can definitely get to number of moles. And with that number of moles, I'm still in that big macroscopic, the big picture scale. But I need to zoom down to the atomic scale. And so the first step here is going to be, I'm going to get from number of moles to number of molecules. And I'm going to be very specific in this step to say that I'm getting the number of molecules of the iron three oxide, so Fe2O3. But that's not what the question is asking for. The question is asking for the number of oxygen atoms. So you see that there needs to be one additional step here where I know that for every molecule of Fe2O3, I'm going to have three atoms um, of oxygen. And so I need to go from there to number of oxygen atoms. So conceptually, this is going to be the route I'm going to take. But now let's look at it from the actual math and dimensional analysis. So we're going to start off with our mass, which is going to be 12.6 grams. And I'm going to be very clear in all this. I'm going to keep writing the molecule itself. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out this grams to get me to number of moles. And so effectively, I'm dividing by the molar mass, just like I did in step one. So I'm going to divide by 159.7 grams per mole. So this is this step right here. Now I need to get into the world of molecules from moles. And the way I'm going to do that is with Avogadro's number, where I'm going to say that I have for every mole, Fe2O3, I'm going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of Fe2O3. And notice that that's a very easy place to get mixed up. There's a big, big difference between the mole and the molecule. And it's very easy to get that mixed up, right? So you want to be sure that just because those words look very similar, that you don't get them mixed up. And so that's going to be this step right here, dealing with Avogadro's number. And then the last step is going to be to get the number of actual oxygen atoms. And so then I have to look at this chemical formula and see that for every molecule of Fe2O3, I'm going to get three atoms of oxygen. And that's going to give me a giant answer when I actually plug this into a calculator because I'm taking 12.6 grams times Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, times three, all divided by 159.7. That's the only number I really have on the denominator that's not a one. And the actual value that I'm going to end up with is 1.43 times 10 to the 25 oxygen atoms. And I'm just going to really quickly recap this last question because you can see when you write it out like this that your grams are going to cancel out with your grams your moles with moles, your molecules with molecules, and you end up with just the units of atoms of oxygen. And that will get you straight to the right answer. Being thorough with your work is always going to be incredibly beneficial as you work through challenge problems like this. So just as a brief recap to this video, 
realize that the most important concept is wrapping your mind around the mole and why we use it. And then you want to work towards understanding how to convert between mole, molar mass, and mass. And then as the additional challenge, taking those quantities and scaling them down to the microscopic level where you can solve for number of molecules or number of atoms.